Hi, I'm Shannon from HouseImprovements.com. Today I want to show you how to install this bathroom vanity. Uh, we're going to go through the process of uh, you know, showing you how to cut out for the plumbing and that sort of thing, getting th everything leveled up and securing it to the wall. So what we've got is a, a knockdown type vanity that we've already assembled and uh, got it into the room here, at least close to where we need to be. Down below here you can see our setup for the plumbing and uh, we've so we've got our water lines right down here so we've got our hot and our cold we've got our drain line just stubbed out through the wall so those are all there your setup could be different your water lines might be coming out of the wall your drain could be coming out of the floor so you know really as far as cutting out the cabinet areas for the plumbing it kind of depends on what your setup is as far as what you are able to do our cabinet here really doesn't have a back, it's just got this one cleat on it. So we've got a little more freedom to, uh, to maneuver this cabinet a little easier. So what we've done is measured our plumbing off the walls from the position where the uh, cabinet's going to sit and marked those corresponding marks on the bottom of the cabinet here and drilled a, an oversized hole. Uh, we can drill an oversized hole uh, because we're going to use a finished uh, chrome plate that slides down around the the pipe afterwards so it'll cover that hole up and the oversized hole just gives us a little more play to, to get everything in place. So uh, that's all we had to cut out for the plumbing but like I said depending on your situation you might have to cut something out just a little bit different so um, you can see we've we've pre-installed the flooring you might have watched that video in fact uh, you, you might not necessarily have flooring in the way uh, in this case it was just vinyl floor so we ran it right through and, and the cabinet's going to sit right on top of it. Um, I like to paint out my rooms before I install the cabinetry. Um, some people will only, you know, maybe first coat or prime and then do all the painting and cutting in after, but this is all finished off. So I just have to be careful to try not to mark the walls when I'm lifting this into place. Um, we have also on this left hand end as I'm facing it over here, and I don't think you're probably going to see it very well is I've, I, I've uh, added a cleat on the side of the cabinet just to space it away from the wall a little bit. So this is this piece here. Um, all you're going to see is the front edge. And that isn't going to come with your cabinets unless you ordered custom cabinets or something. So uh, I've just made that up. And, and the reason for that is to be sure that my, uh, for one thing, my countertop is a molded countertop. You'll, you can see the video on installing that. So it actually hangs over the edge of the counter a little bit each way. So we, we needed a little bit of uh, extra cabinet here so that we didn't have just a dead space where dust and stuff is going to collect. So that was part of the reason. The other reason was this cabinet has drawers on the end here. So this spacer just gives it a little more clearance away from the wall so the drawers don't happen to hit the drywall or something when they're opening and closing. Okay, so that was something I just added on prefer, you know, on my own preference. So. So we've got that already on there. Uh, like I said, we've got the cabinet installed, or not installed, but assembled. And it's ready to set into place because we've got our plumbing holes drilled. So I'm just going to get this uh, positioned here a little bit. And I'm going to lift it up and lift it right over those uh, pipes. And hopefully they line up with our holes properly. My cameraman's just about falling in the tub. If you just stand still for a minute, you might be able to actually see what I'm doing. <laughs> okay, are you done pacing around? So I'm going to lift it up, uh, pop it over those pipes there and set it back down. This is a little easier with two people, but I might be able to handle it on my own. Now our one pipe just needs a little bit of adjustment. Okay, so I've got it over the plumbing. Now I'm just going to get the uh, cabinet itself positioned where the filler strip that I added or just your gable is over to the wall, the distance that you need it to be. And it, it's fitting there pretty nice. And I'm also pushing it back against the other wall there. Now what I want to do is uh, I'm more than likely going to have to do some shimming on it to get it uh, level and, and straight and plumb. So we're just going to see where we're kind of sitting here. And actually that couldn't be any, 
any better. You can see the uh, bubble is, is right between the two lines there. So it's actually really nice right to left. Uh, so I'm super happy with that. Theoretically, hopefully this is nice and plumb here on the end. And it's actually pretty nice as well. So we've gotten pretty lucky here. Uh, the floor must be pretty flat here. Uh, basically, basically, usually what you would have to do is use some kind of tapered shim or wedge underneath different positions of the uh, of the cabinet between the floor and the uh, and the gables of the cabinet, just to shim it into position so that it's sitting nice and and level, and then cut the shims off. Uh, we kind of lucked out here, and this one's going to work out quite nicely. So. So we're going to kind of, I guess, skip that shimming step. Uh, but like I said, you may have to do it in your case uh, just to make sure your cabinet's straight. Um, so moving on, I, I'm really happy with where it's sitting right there. It's everything's back nice and firm to the wall and uh, sitting nice. It's not rocking or anything. So we're good. So next thing I would do, and I actually did it already, but I'll just show you, use a stud finder. Uh, look for the uh, place on the wall and look for your studs right there. It's saying I've got a stud. I've actually got a pencil mark there down on the wall already. I did it before the cabinet was in the way. Slide it along. Nice if you can find two studs. So pre-mark it on there on the wall so that you can easily see it afterwards. You need to be careful that you aren't mistaking a stud for some plumbing, especially a water line. Uh, there'd be nothing more disastrous than to put a screw right through your, your copper or plastic water line because then you have a whole other mess to, to have to fix. In this case, uh, we're aware that our, our water lines actually came up through the floor, so that isn't a huge concern. Uh, something else to think about is what's on the other side of that wall. Could there be you know, some plumbing in it? because of, you know, maybe the kitchen's over there or something. In this case, there's actually a closet on that back side, so there should not be any water lines in there. Um, so, you know, just kind of go through some of the scenarios there, make sure that things kind of make sense. Another thing you could do, you got your marks on the wall there, just double check that they're, you know, either 16 or 24 inches on center. And uh, right here, we're about 16 and a quarter, so I'm, I'm quite certain that those are actually framing members there. So. And, and actually here, the drywall wasn't finished quite as well right behind where the cabinet is. I can actually see a drywall screw here. So that's a, <laughs> that's a real good indication that we're on a stud there. So just go through those scenarios. Make sure before you actually put a screw into the wall that you're not gonna screw into something else. Uh, you know, electrical plumbing, that sort of thing. Uh, we should be all right here. So I'm going to, uh, the, back, the back cleat here on this cabinet is 5 eighths of an inch thick. The drywall is half an inch, so there we're up to an uh, inch and an eighth. Uh, so I want to get some good screw depth into the stud yet, at least an inch. So I've got some two and a quarter inch screws here, which will be uh, more than sufficient to screw this in. Now you could, could pre-drill this if you wanted to and countersink it. Um, I find with this type of particle material, the screws will just basically sink themselves in there and, uh, and uh, go flush anyways. So. So just uh, line yourself up with where you knew your stud was. You can see how the screw just sunk in there nice and flush. Not that anybody's really ever gonna see these, but just good practice. Line up with this one. Same thing there, I'm nice and flush. Cabinet's tight to the wall. I'll just double check that everything is still level and plumb. We're happy there. One thing I didn't really check was how we are here. And uh, no, it's, it's good, We're, we really got lucky here. Everything is uh, nice and square and true, so, so we don't have any issues there. Okay, so I've, I've got it all attached to the wall. Um, some things that you might wanna do, if you ended up with a bit of a gap back here somewhere or whatever, once you had it all leveled in and plumb, 
You might want to use some uh, latex caulking uh, to seal that up, just to cover it up, and then paint in, you know, cut in the wall color again. Uh, same thing over here if you want to. Those are little things you can do. Also, uh, especially in a bathroom, I like to put a small bead of silicone right down here where the cabinet meets the floor. So when you're washing the floor, a bit of water gets splashed down. It doesn't go up underneath the wood and, and wick into the wood, especially this type of material that most of these cabinets are made from these days. They, they will uh, kind of absorb some wood and swell a little bit over time. So, Okay, so uh, basically I've got that screwed in. I'm going to grab my drawers and doors and pop them on, do a little adjusting on those, and then that's, that's the vanity installed. So I'm just going to grab them. And again, I've got them pre-assembled. So we'll see now that the cabinet's sitting in here and all nice and straight and true and square. We'll see whether we need to uh, adjust the drawer fronts at all to get them all lined up nicely. I've found that some of these knockdown cabinets are not always, you can never sometimes get them completely squared up. Actually, I'll do this other door so you can see a little better. So I've had these on here already once before. Um, did some rough minor adjusting to them just with it sitting out in the other room. So basically how this hinge works is you've got a plate or a bracket on the cabinet and you've got the hinge, the actual folding part on the door. Most of them generally will have a lip here, a little crevice that hooks into the front edge on this bracket. And then you, so you put it on there and then you push this end back and it has a little Move, moving part here that clips on the back side. Okay, now uh, then some of them will have a screw that you need to tighten up to actually hold the door on. This one actually clips on and stays there and can be easily taken off by pushing this button on the back and I'll just show you that. It's easier to show you than for you to probably see what I was pushing on there. Okay, so I got my two little front uh, legs or little toes hooked in the front of that bracket. I'm going to push back. Oh, you know, I can hear it clip in there and, uh, and the door is on there, right? Now, if I wanted to take it off for some reason, maybe to get under here and have them out of the way, these particular ones, you push that little button back there on the end and they just simply come off and on like that. So, so these are a little, little better quality hinge. The other ones that I was talking about with the screws, where this screw is, there would be another screw for a different purpose and basically you'd have to tighten or loosen that and then the hinge would pop off around it so um, the screws that are on these particular hinges this front screw here uh, that you'll find that on just about any of these european hinges that look similar to this this very front screw actually adjusts this hinge in and out this way so both of these could be adjusted that way the back one in this case what that one does is actually allows this to slide in and out that way. Okay, so you have some adjustment there. Also the plates here, there's two screws holding the plate on. There's a slotted hole in the plate, so that plate can go up and down as well. So you could physically move the door up and down, in and out, and side to side. So they're very, got lots of adjustment to them, so uh, um, you can play around with it and, and uh, generally get them lined up pretty good. So I'm just gonna clip this other door on. And then we'll see how uh, how things are doing here. And uh, just for an example, I'm just going to put this one out of skew here, so that you kind of see. So you might have closed this, and oh, it won't close because the two are are hitting up here. So then, by adjusting the top screw, uh, sorry, the the uh, the very front screw, I can adjust it whichever way I needed to. Just kind of keep checking, looking that your gap is nice and even here. I just need a little bit more like that. You're looking up here that the top of the doors line up. Actually, these two are, are a little bit out. So I'm going to adjust this one over just a hair. That's better that so you, you can just kind of go along get your doors your drawers all lined up straight um, this this right here is actually a situation that I see quite often on these cabinets 
is the drawers don't always sit nice and square to the cabinet. Um, unfortunately on this particular manufacturer's setup there isn't a lot you can really do with that. Um, I don't know whether they have a hole slightly off or something's just a little out of kilter. The bottom one's fitting really nice but this one here is sticking out a bit. In the, in the grand scheme of it you don't really notice it that much but I'm just I'm right down here so I can see it easily. Um, so do some adjustment, get your doors all lined up the way you want them. You can see the drawers all slide, they, don't, they aren't binding or anything. Uh, once you have that all done, you can install your knobs, so wherever you want them, whether you want them in here or here, your handles, just uh, screw them. Some of the manufacturers, I don't think these guys do, no. Some of them will have the hole kind of predetermined and, and drilled part way through, so just kind of watch for that before you start drilling your own hole and uh, you can put all your knobs on and then you're pretty good to go. Uh, something I didn't mention and I realized when I was putting that drawer on is that it's nice to put a screw because we're up against a wall here it's nice to put another screw if we have wood back here put a screw through the side here just to you know hold the cabinet over I don't know that we actually have anything there to attach to in this case Uh, we might be able to catch that one. <coughs> so I'm going to just grab another screw. I'm actually going to just come down a little bit lower and put another uh, screw into the side. Because it would appear that we can just catch something there. So it just kind of keeps the cabinet from moving around. I've got a slight bit of a space up there. I'm happy with how plumb the cabinet is, but I do have a bit of a space there, so I am going to uh, find a thin shim this one and just uh, slide it down in there just so that I don't suck the cabinet out of plumb the way I wanted it. I'll just double check this end and see that it's all right. Yeah, we're good right there. So now I, I'm good to uh, put a screw in over there. Um, actually, I really would like to put it right up where my shim is, so my arm's probably going to be in the way for you to see, but I'll, I'll stop once I get started here a bit and you can have a look. Okay, so you can see my screw up there. I'm just going to tighten it up, snug it up. Okay, so I've got that in. I'll just double check that it didn't tighten it up and suck it over too much. Oh, that's good. You can see there the bubbles right nicely in the middle, so we're plumb that way. I'm happy there. And the cabinet's nice and solid to the wall. Now you could put another one in there down further if you if you wanted to. Now for that shim, if I had my darn knife with me, and you've probably seen me do this before using shims somewhere else. If I just cut right along the top of the cabinet a few times, trying not to slip and cut the wall. Now I can break that off. That's a nice clean, clean finish. The countertop will go on there. And like I said, the little bit of a space I have there, I'll use some uh, latex caulking to caulk that and then just uh, cut the paint color back into it. So we should be good there. Stick this drawer back in. Okay, so uh, other than this little bit of a flaw there, a little bit of a flaw there, uh, I, I think we're, uh, we're going to call this one pretty much good. Um, so I guess the next step would be to put the countertop in and, and the sink and do all the plumbing, but uh, we'll save that for another video. So I, I think I showed you as much as I can here. Uh, in our case, we had an exceptionally uh, level level floor plumb walls and everything so you didn't see you know sometimes you got to struggle a little bit to get it all shimmed up and and sitting nice so uh, this one just happened to work out really good but uh, you know I think I talked about it enough I think you understand that you know you want to use a level make sure that everything is plumb and, and level so we've got that attached there's nothing else I can show you um, I just want to talk a minute about uh, our website there's a link down below here 
in the uh, caption that describes this video. There's a link there to our uh, website, host-improvements.com. There you'll find some DIY type articles. You'll find a link to our forum. Lots of people are going there and asking questions and I'm, I'm answering everything that I can. And we're even getting a few forum members now that uh, are coming in and, and helping people out as well. So that's great. And also our YouTube channel, which you're probably watching us on right now. Uh, just uh, go right into our channel. You can see all our videos that we have up. And uh, if you like what you see, maybe you want to subscribe and then you'll be notified every time we post something new. Okay, thanks for watching.